What is a hybrid home? Uh, and why is it called hybrid home? It's really because there's two systems uh, that work in that house, and the reason why the two systems are there is to uh, make it available and attractive for mainstream America, really. So, because, you know, Americans, I hate to say it, but, and, the, and Dutch people too, all Westerners are kind of uh, a little bit lazy, I should say, and have a hard time changing their lifestyle. And the house is designed so that it, uh, it will harvest the resources from Mother Nature that already are hitting the house and use, use those resources as much as possible for the inhabitants. And automatically, when those resources run out, the conventional systems kick in, such as uh, you know, the water, uh, city water, or well, if you have one, or uh, the grid power. So it's a staged design that uh, prioritizes use of natural resources, but doesn't require a lifestyle change for people that, uh, that live in the house in a manner that, let's say, um, most alternative houses were designed in the past. Um, you know, you, you all remember that it was, it took a bit of effort and conscious living to be able to live in a strawville house with, uh, you know, DC power or uh, uh, batteries and flipping switches and what have you. But this, this house is designed to be all completely automated and um, comfortable to live in with all the modern things that people have nowadays, the big screen TV, the big tub, who knows what they have. There's no, no compromise necessary to, in order to live in these houses or there's no teenage chasing required or you can have, still have a 50 man party at Christmas and all these things, so no minimalizing there. Um, so that's the concept about the hybrid houses. Um, so as, as it says there, natural resources are giving preference. Uh, and the other main goal for this house was, and its design, is to be completely independent, which is another uh, important reason to... Uh, there's, there's all kinds of reasons why you want to be independent. We know, all that, we know about that, let's say that storm that happened in New Hampshire that put four and a half million people out of power right before Christmas where people had to go outside to warm their hands and their kids with a burn barrel because literally it was a freezing cold and there was no power to be had and it couldn't be restored within weeks. Um, I personally think that the conventional power system is outright uh, primitive. Uh, it doesn't um, give us any reliability and uh, it puts our families and our properties completely at danger and at the mercy of commonly occurring, every year occurring natural disasters. So it's, I don't even know if you would call them a natural disaster, if they would happen. Ice storms, uh, hurricanes, they happen every year in our country and, and it's really uh, interesting how we are con still continuing to have above ground power lines that are affected and that affect people's personal life so drastically when these things happen. So um, if you're if you are depending on a power system that literally stretches over several counties then that means your personal house is a target just as big as that. A hurricane hits on one corner of your county or a tornado and takes out power lines that are that you are tapped into and it may not have anything to do with your house. You may not have any type of damage to your house, but you could if, uh, if you don't have power. <clears throat> so that's, that's what this is uh, designed to do as well, is to reduce that risk that people have to uh, um, have damage done to their personal homes and their livelihood. Uh, so rainwater is being collected, uh, there's passive solar heat, it's designed so the house is mostly, if the sun is out it is completely heated by passive solar, but even on a cloudy day uh, it does pretty good. Here in Seattle I think it would do really good, 
in Montana, which has a much harsher climate, uh, it, uh, it was fantastic, I thought. And uh, unfortunately, I don't, I'm not a scientific guy. I do some monitoring, but uh, I don't have any data on this, except for that I've lived in it for two winters now in the summer. Um, as you can see, the house here is designed. I should have my little power pointer here. Power pointer, uh, infrared pointer, I should say. So, infrared, uh, yeah. See, this little structure here is an atrium. That is, and this wall is south facing. Um, it is a passive solar heat uh, generator and battery bank, so to speak. You know, it allows the sun to come in on this face right here. It hits the uh, thermal mass, which is brick, concrete, dirt inside of that atrium immediately from the early morning. And as the sun progresses and comes to the other side and sets in the evening, it still hits that, uh, that atrium. The atrium consists of two exterior walls, one right here. Even though it's all glass, it's double pane glass that is clear, just clear double pane glass so that the sun can come in and, it, and we can grow plants there. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a secondary exterior wall on the inside here which uh, has a couple of gigantic uh, open opening double doors that allow the heat from this atrium that is collected to go into the house. What, where is this called? This is in uh, Montana. Oops, wrong way. Here's another picture of that. There's uh, independent power. We go from the outside to the inside just because there's some significant architectural details and design uh, features in there that, that are more understood when we're looking on the outside first. Of course, solar panel and a little windmill. We have a massive amount of solar there and wind both. But we are a little bit uh, handicapped on the water side. It's uh, semi-desert, so to speak. And uh, our uh, precipitation for a year is only 16 inches, and that includes the snow. Same as Port Townsend? Same as Port Townsend? Yeah, yeah. 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 16. 17. Really? 17. Uh, don't know. Really? Wow, it's a little less than 50. Yeah, 56. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well. So you are, uh, but you're much lower here and you have more access to water, that's for sure, your water table. And you're welcome to it, it's completely free, you just log on to it and you can write up, sign up for the newsletter, you get them dropped automatically in your mailbox. Um, this uh, particular newsletter that's coming on in April here um, actually talks about this rainwater and its importance. It's really very important. I would say Seattle is a very excellent place to do it. Uh, and particularly because it's uh, our water is really substandard that we get from the city. Really is substandard. And uh, when you read the article, you immediately understand why. <laughs> but anyways, uh, the short way to provide for your water in the house is really just to collect it from your roof. And even though this house, of course, you know, it takes care of its, its water, its electricity, uh, its heat. Uh, there's some plants, vegetables and plants that you can grow in this atrium, and we get to that later. It carries some responsibility if you're in charge of all of your resources. And obviously, you have to monitor your own resources when you collect them. So it's a, a design like this is a little more... Uh, labor intensive. You've got uh, water tanks to clean, uh, but it's to me it's like owning a Ferrari in the garage and just kind of you know, spiffing it up from time.